Uh, hey, this is Josh from Engadget, and uh, we're sitting here with Matias Duarte from uh, the Director of User Experience at Google. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. And formerly, uh, you may know him as the man behind WebOS, a couple of other, it's not the first thing you've done. You've <laughs> had your hand in a few other. Yeah, don't forget the sidekick. The sidekick, yeah. which I'm sure many of you are still using at this point, <laughs> but, uh, but you're at Google now. Devoted fans, I thank you for that. <laughs> but you're at Google, Director of User Experience, That's or right. some combination of those. Words. Yeah, in some just, order. We, we change it up every week, actually. And you're, when did you, when did you, you left, so let's talk about this, and I don't know how much of it you can actually <laughs> okay. talk about, but you were at Palm, mm -hmm. uh, Palm was, For was, about two uh, years. was, and, and, two and, and a half years. And, and a lot of, I mean, WebOS is, a, you really drove that, right? I mean, that is yeah, kind came, of your I baby. I came in at the ground floor. For right, that, yeah. And this is, that was your vision in a lot of yep. ways. Uh, and it's an impressive vision, I should tell you. Thank I'm you. a big, big WebOS fan. I'm a big fan, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> You love your baby. That's good, but so you, you so you go and you create this thing at Palm. Palm gets sold to HP, mm -hmm. um, and then you bail. Oh, that's <laughs> what harsh. was what was I mean? What happened there? That I mean, can you talk about what made you decide to move on from 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 Palm and, and go? Um, I wanted to to change computers, right? Like the thing that motivates me, the thing I've been doing for decades, is trying to make computers not suck and. They still suck. Yeah, um, they're, they're better. They're better. I was just I was just <laughs> ranting about this on our podcast, which is just like make better stuff. Your people are not doing good well, things. And it's hard. It's really hard, right? Um, at Palm, did great work. I'm very proud of that. Very proud of the work I did earlier. Helio, uh, Danger. Um, Google was an opportunity to just make stuff better on a much bigger scale than anything. Yeah, I'd a really before. a growing, hugely growing scale. Absolutely. Fastest growing scale. Right? And they said and do they 300, say 300,000 devices, more than 300,000 devices a day. That's a lot of devices. That's a lot of devices. Worldwide, right? Yeah, I mean like yeah. you could like carpet this parking lot with that, right? Well, I mean the the 90% of the show floor at CES is just Android. Yeah. I mean really, well, everything here's I mean I was just saying to our team, there's just Microsoft and Android here. I mean, there really isn't any other presence. You know, everything is running Android. All of the new tablets we're and, seeing. And Microsoft is all about the bowling. Oh, and they've got, well, they've got their new next generation of Windows. The reason I went to Google, you know, is, is because now is the time, right? There's this huge opportunity right now where the mobile computing space is just exploding. It's like, uh, it's like we almost don't even have the vocabulary to talk about what's really happening because we don't even have the, the picture perspective. And, right. and when I think about it and I try to, like, articulate what's going on. It, it reminds me of when I was a kid and like personal computers were starting out, yeah. right? And everybody's like, well, we know we want to have a computer in the home and we know it's got to have a monitor and it's got to have a keyboard and you had your pets and your Commodores and your Apple IIs and everything. The pet. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody's like, hey, wait a minute, guys. Let's put a mouse on this thing, yeah. right? And no, it's, it's like it's, it's, totally it's, it's, changes, It's this right? evolutionary thing that's happening. It's exploding now. Yeah. And it's every couple of weeks we're seeing uh, uh, new devices, new, I mean, alterations to OS is obviously Android is one that we're seeing okay. evolve really quickly. Uh, so it's this opportunity at Google for you to come in and do really do something substantial for have, Android. Have, have broad impact. And, and for yeah. this OS. And and the thing that makes Android unique in that is the the fundamental vision behind Android is so different than anything I'd done before, right? And that's what excited me about it. Like I want new challenges World as a design designer. Isn't that, isn't uh, that the fundamental? Uh, that's that's the secret objective. Yeah. Oh, the secret. Along with the killer the robots. Evil. That's the, the evil uh, objective. Yeah, no, no. Next to the don't be evil objective. <laughs> no, the real. But just the idea that you're not working on one product, right? You're not saying we're one company vertically integrating, making one product, and we're going to focus on one market, and we're going to try to meet that particular need. But instead, the idea that, look, there's a common problem, that every company that wants to succeed at making computing better, making computing mobile, has. And that's the, the fundamental platform problem. And that we're not only going to you know, try to find a way to get everybody to benefit from it, we're going to do it for free. Right. Right. So well, we're, we're just going to work on building this common it's not totally tide I mean, that rises all boats, right? Yeah. And, you know, that's really cool. So, okay, so how long have you been there now? Uh, around seven months. And um, Seven or eight months, I'm not sure exactly. And uh, what was it, so you come into, and what, what version of Android was there when you 
appeared on the scene? What were they? What <laughs> were they? In. What were they working on? I mean, what was it? Froyo? Were you at the Froyo stage before, a little bit before that? Uh, no, they had just finished Froyo. Okay. So we were. Uh, we the, the first product I worked on was Gingerbread. Okay. And that was like crazy because, like I was saying earlier, it was super short time scale. It's like I land. Um, and it's like, hey, by the way, we're about to ship gingerbread tomorrow. Um, what do you think? Oh, was that, was that <laughs> you know? soon? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't quite that bad, but <laughs> it was similar to that. And Nexus S was a similar thing. It's like, right. okay, um, so by the way, in addition to dealing with gingerbread, we think we should also do a phone with it. Um, so, so you were looking at gingerbread as, they didn't say, hey, we have this phone coming with this new version. Can you, help, can you work on this? It was like, Here's gingerbread all by itself, and also we want to put it on a phone. Yeah, gingerbread was planned as a release, and you know, that, um, that was something that was underway when I got but, there. But uh, at Google, things are looked at as just the version, not specifically targeted towards a device. I mean, when you, when you, get, you know, for instance, we'll talk about Honeycomb in a uh -huh. second. Yeah. But didn't, was it not looked at as we need to target this for a specific device? Was it looked at more as we need to make this version? Well, that, that was the conversation that we started having like right when I got there was where we, we need to have this release, right? right? It needs to address certain things. Um, do we want to have some hardware to go with that? Yeah. Right. And what makes sense uh, as the hardware for that? Um, and, you know, that's the other kind of hard to wrap your head around uh, thing about Google or about Android in specific. It's just this idea that you get to work on concept cars and you also, but, but, but your main job is, is building these engines that you're giving away for free, right? Right. So you, you really are always thinking about this platform, the open source platform. Yeah. And the, the, the core of it. And, the core and, of it. So the Nexus and, S and the is, the Nexus is, of it. Nexus is a concept car. Yeah. And like, like the Nexus is, S is, is the like a, the, the way to show off. It's like, hey, we got this awesome, you know, eco-friendly eight-cylinder engine or whatever, right? right? Like, and, and let's show you what it we can do. We put it in this awesome So we're going to put car. it in this car, right? Yeah. And, and, and show people like, okay, this is how you use it right. You yeah, know? That's, that's interesting. I mean, that's really interesting. So, and, But it's it's totally different than what anybody else does and totally different than anything I'd done before. So well, I mean, if you look why at it, wouldn't I want to do that? And right? when you look at Android, the explosion, like what we were just talking about, yeah. it, it's clear it's different because it's in everything. I mean, it's on so many devices. It's in right. cars. I mean, it literally is in cars. Right, right, right. right. It's on televisions. Oh, it's, it's in places that it's, we don't know about. You know, clock right? radios. Like, is, is it on printers? I, I believe it I think is it printers. is. I think it is I, on I printers. I believe I saw it's a weird. printer today. It's weird. got this that. parallel, the <laughs> HB Palm parallel here. Um, but uh, so you come in, you're working on gingerbread mm -hmm. right off the bat. Yeah. And, and how much did you, where did you contribute to that? How much did you contribute? I mean, obviously you're- Well, the, the window of opportunity for gingerbread was really, really narrow, right? right. So we focused on the things that made most sense uh, to make it a great phone for the holidays, right? Um, getting the text input really right, which meant working on the keyboard and you know starting to work on cut, copy, and paste and, and improving text selection and things like that. Um, you know giving it a little bit of a, a, a visual refresh, start yeah. to try to bring some cohesion and, and start to bring some of the new design direction uh, into the product. Um, but the scope was really narrow. Right, right? I mean, you, you, this, was, this was kind of, it was a done deal. We had to deal, pick our battles. Right, right? Yeah, it was like, it was very close to being done and, and they said, how can you, what can you do in the short window that was, to make it feel? Yeah. It was probably a conversation like that. Uh, emotionally, it feels like, hey, wait a minute, like, let me elbow in. <laughs> like, oh, really? I, think, like, I have an idea. I got an idea don't, here. <laughs> don't send out the OTA update. So, okay, but then, so obviously, at, the, at CES 2011, which is where we are right now, which I didn't say, but people will we know. Are. Um, the big, I mean, the big, I think the big story right now is Honeycomb, Android 3.0, which we've seen launched on a, a handful of tablets, um, and obviously is, there's more coming. And this is, Honeycomb is, you're all in on that, right? I mean, this is something that you have a, you've invested in a creative way very deeply. I, I have invested very deeply, as, as has the entire team. And, you know, it's one of the great things about coming to Google. It's like we had a really deep bench there, right? Yeah. A really great team to work with there. Um, but it's funny because that's, that's the other thing that's a different challenge for me as a designer. Coming to Android, right, it's, it's different from all the other operating platforms I've designed before, right? It's not a blank slate, right? right? So, you know, I've got a really great appreciation now for those guys who have to go into the dense urban centers and be like, all right, we want to demolish this one building <laughs> so we can put this statue here, that, but leave everything else alone. Is that Honeycomb? It's a, you're demolishing a building to put a statue? Is that the metaphor? Um, it's, it's, it's a, uh, I don't know, let's put a statue. 
<laughs> it's <laughs> you said that, did you? I did say yeah, that. Okay. But um, <laughs> I'm not making that up. Make a different building, a more right. beautiful building. What, right. Whatever you want to say. It's it's um, it's like well, maybe a better metaphor. It's like if you grew up playing Street Fighter, and all of a sudden you now have to play chess. Oh, interesting. It's I thought like, you were gonna say Mortal Kombat. Which would <laughs> no, have been really no, 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 no. <laughs> kind of it's awesome. Like, but... You have different constraints, and you're you're playing at a different pace. Right. Right. And you have. Um, it's, it's like this, these multiple pieces that you have to juggle, right? The legacy of Android, the compatibility, the range of devices that you have to support, right? The range of partners that you have to support. All these things make it a, just a much more complicated problem. Yeah. I think probably a more complicated design and platform problem than anybody else is tackling. And, and Honeycomb is targeted to start with at, at just tablets right now. I mean... Well, the sneak peek we gave you today was yeah. Honeycomb on tablets. Well, it seems, I mean, it seems like you've changed... I mean, if you look at Honeycomb compared to Gingerbread yeah. or Froyo or any other version of Android we've seen, huge difference. There is. I mean, there is. completely different uh, use paradigms going on. I mean, different ways of getting around the, mm -hmm. the operating system. There's, there's no buttons on any of these tablets that we saw with Honeycomb, right? There's no That's physical right. That's right. buttons. Yeah. You've got virtual... Yeah. Uh, menu buttons, virtual home buttons, and, and I mean, it just looks really, really different. So clearly you're, you're trying to do something that's specific to a tablet, mm -hmm. and you're infusing it with a different design sensibility. I have a lot of questions about what is happening there. It, for, my first question is, and this is something that people have been asking and wondering about, is Honeycomb, is it the next version of Android for every Android device or for a smartphone for my Nexus One or whatever the What next you see in Honeycomb is absolutely the direction for Android. Okay. Right? Like, uh, I, th I think we, Mike captured it really well this morning at the demo, right? We are, we're taking the things that people love about Android and we're making them better, and the things that aren't working, um, uh, we're blowing up and putting up new buildings, and we're trying to add totally new things that enhance Android, but we have to serve all of Android's needs. Right. Right, you know? Android so, shows up on a car, you're going to see the same kinds of improvements, the same design philosophy, the same usability improvements, the same new paradigms, new tools, they're all going to be part of that. Right. And, okay, so, so what are the things, what were the things that had to be blown up? What were the, what were the big ones that you're currently demolishing to, to, to <laughs> rebuild better? Can well, you the, give me a, the like a hit list? buttons are, are one example of that, right? And, and it's... Um, so is, is Android going to move towards a, a buttonless? Well, what we want to do is we want to leave it open so that people can be more creative, right? Right. Like when Android started, there was a, still a lot of requirements about you know what kind of hardware it could run on, screen sizes, number of buttons it required. Even up until Gingerbread, you know, we required these physical buttons. Right. With Honeycomb, you don't need to have physical buttons. We've provided a way in the system that we can take care of that for you on screen. Right. Right. Which has all sorts of other benefits, which are also great. Um, but our partners now can take that and they can do what they want with it. If somebody you know, feels that for their application, physical buttons are absolutely the right thing to do, they, great, they, they can do that, yeah. right? And, and maybe that's appropriate for a car-based navigation version of Android, right? Yeah. Um, but when you're dealing with a tablet, of course, where you know, your orientation is always random, you, know, you really want the muscle memory of having your buttons you know, be where you expect yeah. them to where be. Where your buttons are yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. And so, and so uh, at or this point, that, that uh, that idea, that'll scale to a four inch phone or a three and a half inch phone, as well as to a tablet, this buttonless. It can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the the future of Android is that we're not going to dictate to you whether you need to have buttons or not. Right. What are the other things that you felt were problem areas that you looked at from a, I mean, I think you, you obviously are, are, I mean, based on what we saw with, I think WebOS is such an advanced, uh, intuitive uh, user interface and user experience. It's clear that you look at what makes sense for a user, like what is, what makes sense to on how to use this thing mm -hmm. versus oh this would be a cool effect or we could do this so so what to you what did you see besides the buttons where you saw well, what would make more sense than what we're I doing mean, now th there's a number of things that we're we're adding with honeycomb that you saw right um, the uh, multitasking right yeah. the, the the task switching right like android's always had multitasking capability it was not easy for users to discover you know you in know, order hold to switch down <laughs> home <laughs> yeah. and hope this other happen right it it you know when you have to hold down you're, you're always struggling with that press and hold latency you know press and hold interactions are very hard for people to get right it's very easy for you to get the timing wrong right. even when you get it right you feel like you're waiting no matter how short you make the delay just the fact that you have to wait triggers part of your brain that says right. like 
I'm slowed down, you know, what a drag, right? That's really um, interesting. I mean, it's actually, I mean, it's fascinating to hear you talk about this because you don't, I mean, when you're using it, I like long presses, uh -huh. but you're absolutely right. You do feel like you're waiting right. for something like that. And, so, and there's, there's places where it's appropriate, right? The, yeah. There's a long press, uh, there's, there's a, a long press still part of Android, you know, uh, in terms of interacting and selecting objects. Um, and we're trying to make that more consistent, which is, you know, one of the other things that, 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 that we're building up on. Right. But, but for, for, for multitasking, that's not the way we wanted to do it, you know. The more that the device becomes useful, the more that it becomes integrated into your life, the more things you're doing at once, and we really want to make multitasking easy, discoverable, quick, right? right? And so what's, so what's the new, give me the basic of the new multitasking, how would you describe it? Well, we've got an, we've got an on-screen affordance, uh, one of our virtual buttons right there, you tap it, you get a list of all of your recent applications, you can see them, Right, you have not just their name and their icon, but you have a, a, a visible, tangible representation of what it is. Right. So, so it kind of sounds kind can, of like the start you can, menu. You can you recognize the image. Like the Windows Start <laughs> menu, right? I mean, it's. I actually, I, I, I don't know. Does the Windows Start menu show you what what the what the Windows is actually you, doing? No, but it doesn't show like recent, but it has this kind of list of that pops over. So, I mean, when we saw actually when we saw Andy with it, we said it looks like there are some earlier, much earlier, before we've seen what we, we saw now. There are some almost desktop-like uh, uh, attributes to what you're doing in Honeycomb, and, and that is one of them. That, to, to me, reminds me of uh, the multitasking. Or? Yeah, I mean, I just feel yeah. like that well, the absolutely. idea. Well, absolutely. I mean, the desktop computers, right, are the most you know useful computers that we have, right? And you know, it kind of feels weird to talk about useful computers and not useful computers, but right. you know, we're surrounded by computers that are less useful but are essentially computers. And for a long time, mobile devices were that way. Yeah. Right. You'd have a little mobile computer in your phone, but it, you know, you could barely do anything with it, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and it was a combination not just of power, the same thing, but of things like the user interface, right? Yeah. So, so as our mobile uh, computers become more useful, they're going to seem more like desktops to us, right? But that doesn't mean that they're going to converge and become the same interface necessarily, right? right. Um, so what you want is that utility that you have on the desktop, that quick ability to, to kind of at a glance see what you got going on, just touch what you want to deal with, right. you're right there, right? Um, and it's important also to, you know, to be able to see the, the picture that you have in your mind of that application, right? The state of that application is important to recognize the application. Right. You know, icons um, are, are like uh, symbols. You know, they're they're an abstract element again, and it you know it engages a different part of your brain to recognize that. To be like, I want to go back to email, so or back to the Luxor map or whatever it was that you were looking at, right? You have to parse, you know, the symbol, yeah. right? Whereas when you just say, okay, what was I doing? You see them all spread out and you recognize what you're doing, it's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's hitting the primal yeah. part of your brain. It's yeah. like, it's a thing. This is what I'm built Well, no, and, and that's one of the, the process, things about, and that's, right? you know, not to keep referencing WebOS, but one of the things about that multitasking experience, I'm sorry. But you will. No, I, well, I mean, it's, it's the, you know, it's the last thing that we saw that you did, and mm -hmm. had, I think it, it's kind of a, had a huge impact. I mean, you look at RIM with their playbook, I mean, certainly you've seen it. Yeah. They're yeah, clearly yeah. ripping off WebOS. I mean, you've clearly influenced them with the cards. But what I was going to say is to see what you're doing in a, you know, because it's in Android now, it's hidden, right? You basically see the icon, but you don't know yeah. what's happening there. Yep, yep. And so I think to 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 unhide it is a kind of a big deal. Yeah. So yeah. what about what about? And so here's another example of, of of things that that we're kind of improving uh, on the usability front, right? You saw a little bit of this in the demo where in Gmail, Mike is is using the the what we're calling the application bar at the top of the screen. And it's got you know kind of all his view actions and his commands clustered right there. And as he enters kind of contextually relevant modes by selecting things, you know that bar transforms to show him what's what are the actions that he can take in his current state. Yeah, is, right? that, is that you getting rid of those the hidden menus? Yeah, that's, yeah. So that's gonna be my but next question because that is that's the one that to me is the killer where you have all of these different things you can do, and then you've got menus inside of a menu. Yes. Is that, is that the way you're going to expose so, that stuff? Yeah, so, so standardizing on this application bar where we're exposing the most common and most useful functions for the user you know, is one of those ways that we're, we're you know, moving Android forward, making it more usable. And that scales to a small device? Yeah, absolutely. It does? Yeah. Okay, so, so here's a question I have, and I, I don't want to take up your entire evening. It's actually gotten really dark since we started. <laughs> I'm sure you have other things to do, dinner plans. We've seen these, uh, two, now two, I think two Honeycomb it's, tablets you know, today. Actually, it, it's fine, we can spend as much time, it's only Vegas, really, there's nothing to do here at That's night. true, well, 
<laughs> yeah, there's nothing to do in Vegas. I see you're being funny. That's very clever. Um, we saw, we've seen two tablets today, right? Uh, the uh, Moto tablet and what's the other one? The LG? Am I right with that? Two actually, honeycomb. I don't know. What, what, two honeycomb what, tablets. Yeah. Okay, LG yeah. showed their tablet. Okay, Great. yeah. You, you didn't know if you could say or not. I, I didn't know actually. And we what, saw what's the, been uh, that hasn't. the Samsung one running honeycomb as well. Okay. No, we didn't. Yeah. Is there one? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> so this is the amazing thing about Android, right? Like. People come up with stuff right. that we have no idea. What so Samsung done. is working on a honeycomb tablet. I don't can you know. confirm that? I can okay, neither confirm wrong. nor deny. Uh, but they both were running. In terms of what we saw, there was no skin on the LG. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no skin on the Moto tablet, Motorola tablet. I mean, Motorola skins all of their uh, Android devices. Mm -hmm. um, LG does as well, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah. Uh, so, is honeycomb? Are you doing away with the idea of? Partners, reskinning? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's it's going to be an open source release, like every other release, and you know, I hope partners will feel comfortable reskinning it and you know, adding value. You want you want HTC, HTC Sense to go on top of what you're doing in Honeycomb. If that's what HTC wants, I want them to be I able saw, to do that. I just I feel like I saw a little bit in your <laughs> eyes, like a little, like, you know, come on, don't, you don't have to, it's, it's pretty good. We're working hard on this. Maybe you don't want to skin well, it. Well, no, uh, the, the idea on the UI is the same that it is for the basic platform, right? Like we want to craft a really solid basic platform for everybody to innovate on top of, right? I mean, it's just crazy that we, we have all these companies that are spending all this time building all these services, uh, all this code that's doing the same thing, right? Right, like radio stacks and and you know kernels and process stacks and you know graphics drivers and and the UI is no different, right? Like mobile computing has common common needs, right? You need to be able to manage activities. You need to be able to start and organize stuff. You need to customize. You need to manage notifications in a non-intrusive way. Right. You, now more than ever, it's when, when Android is part of your life, you know, 24-7, right? You put that on the phone, you pick up your tablet, right? You put that on the tablet, you look at your TV, right? You, you, you need ways to control notifications, right? Yeah. All of these common problems are, are just common to humanity, right? It doesn't matter what kind of tablet or what kind of market or what kind of branding you're going after, right? right? So I want to make that better. I want to make that, you know, uh, build that up, have that be the tide that rises all boats. Right. If somebody wants to, to change it from there, great. Um, but I want to make it also possible that, that people don't need to change that, that they could invest right. in something else. Well, my impression of, of you as a, as a designer, and as somebody who's obviously extremely thoughtful uh, and uh, has tremendous care for the products you're working on. You don't on. know me very well. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I was always, I was given the impression by, I spoke <laughs> to colleagues of yours, and I was always, I was given the impression that you're extremely passionate about the stuff you're doing, and you're, and you're, um, and that you have, the things you're doing are the things that you want to do for specific reasons. You have reasons behind. You know, some people will just design something because it looks cool, like we were talking about before, but you seem to have very specific ideas about why you want things to do them and how you want them to do them. So is it tough to be, for you to, to be at a, in a place where you know the work that you do on, on Honeycomb, however brilliant or special you feel like it is, is going to be changed by, I mean, maybe, there may be some fundamental as, as things. As a that designer, don't you know, yeah. there's there's a challenge always to realize that, my goodness, you know, it's the entire world doesn't think exactly the way I do, right? Right. right. So you get over that, right? Yeah, it's they tough, beat that though. out of you in art school, right? Yeah. Um, but, but you know, that's that that's part of the challenge. That's part of the opportunity here, right? You want to do great work, and and you want to make people feel like they can improve on your work, right? Right. That's, you know. Sometimes some partners are going to do stuff that I'm going to feel like, oh no, you just you, you totally missed the point. You didn't understand what we were trying to do. And other times they're going to do something else that we think is brilliant, right? right? And then you're and going to take that, you steal that from them, you're going to <laughs> knock them off. And no, well, hopefully they'll contribute it to the open yeah. source project. I mean, and do, and do you see that from a lot of partners? Are they contributing? I mean, the, like HTC, for instance. Is there a back and forth? There? I actually, I, I don't know what what the level of contribution is. Oh, okay, you're not. Yeah. I'm, I'm you not. not you I'm not. With that. You know, I, I can talk that open source talk, but I, I don't see the, the the geek details of that process. So, so when is Honeycomb in the market? Do you know? Do you know what I don't the exact know. What, dates what, are? What are the dates we've announced for Honeycomb? No, no dates. Have. Okay. I think we're all set February. Is that right? That's soon. 
that is soon. So it's, I mean, it's, it, it, this isn't something, we're not looking at a beta on these tablets right now. It's never done. We? It's never done until the last bit's in the can. No, it's, Go you. it's Google. It's never done. <laughs> it's always well, beta. The, the design like, is go, never done. Right? Google does beta for years. So. <laughs> but, but I mean, Honeycomb is, is, is a really, I mean, that's a fully formed vision that we're seeing. It's not just a few bits that, and there's some other pieces you have to put together. Well, it's a sneak peek. There's, there's still some surprises oh, no, I'm coming. Sure, I, I'm sure there there's, are. There's, there's surprises coming, and, 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 and really, we, I mean, we're working on every aspect of the UI up until the last minute. I think it's a pretty good place to leave it. Uh, Matias, thank you so much. Oh, I really, thank you. really appreciate you doing this. That and, was fun. Uh, big fan. You have to come back. You should come to the Engadget show, actually. I'm not putting you on the spot, but we do a show in New York. It's like a live audience and sure, kind of a big yeah. thing. We'd love to have You'll you. You'll put so. me up in New York? I'll yeah, no, it. we will put you up in New York. We'll get you on a flight out there. Awesome. But uh, thanks again. Thanks so much. I really no, appreciate anytime. it. No, anytime. Thank you, Josh.